And to be honest, if, if you ask people about the 50 or the 100 or, and, and say, what are your memories of it? Most of their memories will be silly stories or the checkpoint yeah. people dressed up in fancy dress or whatever it may be. You know, and whilst it's an amazing route and amazing scenery and all those kind of things, it is the other stuff that, that people will, you know, they remember. And I think that's what what makes the race what it is. You know, it's, it's, it's that additional stuff rather than just the running. Yeah, yeah. I did have one question, actually, that I said I'd, I'd ask. It's from um, Steve Felby. And he said, uh, due to time difference here in Hong Kong, I won't be able to make it. Could you ask... Could you ask that after the success of this virtual event, has Mark changed his opinion on virtual events and will he hold more? Um, I never really had an opinion against him in the first place, to okay. be honest. I just, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I didn't really have any opinion of virtual events because it's not something I'd experienced. And it is, you know, it's, it's a, a new thing for everybody. Um, I mean, I guess we need to see. What's interesting is you see a lot of people say this, of whatever uh, work they're doing or whatever, you know, they're, they're doing the lives, is that how a lot of the stuff that's, um, how COVID has affected us in certain ways and how much of that stuff will carry forward. So like the obvious one, people say more people will probably continue to work at home now than ever before mm -hmm. because they've been forced to work at home and they've now prepared to work at home and they've got the resources to do it. So they'll probably continue doing it. And I wonder that we've learned with our events, we're putting things in place even when the events restart because you know, proper events can can start at the end of this month if you're if you have COVID measures in place. There will be things that we will have to do, and that I think we'll continue to do all the way down the line. Mm. Um, because it makes you think outside the box, and some of the things you come up with, you think, well, do you know what? I might actually keep this because we can use this even when events go back to normal. Mm. So there's two things to consider here: is one, will there be a demand for virtual events? So when um next year if Lake 100 is back as normal will there be a demand for virtual events at all will they die away or will they you know continue to be as strong i mean it's that you know that's the first thing and then the, the, the second thing is how can we then so how do we work the two together so we, we had a conversation about Lake 50 and Lake 100 in the same week you could have a virtual event where people who aren't in the event could even join in in the same week or, and it could be part of the build-up, maybe. Mm. Um, but then if people were doing the virtual event, would they opt not to do the real event and do the virtual event instead? Because I'd never want that, because the, the event for me is the main thing. The real event is the main thing. But it opens it up to a lot of people who probably can't do 50 miles in one go, but they could do it. Yeah. You know, 50 miles on mountainous terrain in one go is impossible, but they could feel part of it by doing, you know, 50 miles over the week. So, so it'd be interesting. So I, I, I'm... I, we, We've no set plans about whether we're going to use virtual events going forwards or keep them going, but there's certainly a lot of a lot of ideas which it's created, which I think will probably, you know, there's a good chance they will be continued for years to come. Yeah, excellent. Well, we've got 71 people watching, Mark. So there's quite a few people left uh, tuning in. One. Yeah. The, what that because you're on, John, not because of me. No, no, it's because of you. <laughs> yeah. So if those those who are watching, if you've got a question, you'll need to put it on the uh, on the YouTube comments because then I can see it and bring it into Mark. So if you've got a comment, got a question, got your training plan of how you're going to do it, and you want to share that with us, just put it on there, and uh, I'll ask Mark that. Now, I you thought... should have had Terry on. If you've got Terry on, you would have had 500. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the real star, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get the other one to get Terry. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought, Mark, the other area I'd like to chat to you about is um, just to get your advice on people doing this, okay? So, say, for example, someone's doing the Lakeland 50, the most they've ever run before is maybe 10 miles, you know, and now they've got to put 50 together in a week. And then also for the 100 milers, it's actually 105 miles, isn't it? You know, you're expecting the full distance, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so it, again, I, I thought it'd be good just to sort of, um, just for you to share some some thoughts and principles, ideas of how people should try and pace themselves over the over the seven days. Yeah, I guess what you do have is you've got the people uh, who have done the fifty and the hundred before, or people who are ultra runners and maybe who are in the fifty or the hundred this year. So those people. are maybe fit enough to run 50 or 100 miles in one go without stopping anyway so for those people it's going to be less of a problem you would like to think mm -hmm. although they're probably not event fit because they've had nothing to target so um you know they might not be as fit as they'd like to be um 
but the the, the thing with um with running 105 miles to run 105 miles in one week is a massive challenge anyway mm. even if you're ultra fit mm. because you sit in the state of some of the people after finishing the 100 <laughs> yeah you know it looks like vietnam doesn't it? you know and they're coming in and it's in the medical tents so the, the, they are literally like walking zombified at the end of 105 miles. So running 100 miles, just because we're doing it over a week, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss it as it being relatively easy. For anybody to run 100 miles in a week, it's really hard. So my top tips would be, if you think 50 miles or 105 miles is going to be challenging for you, the first thing is slow down. And I know it might sound like a really stupid thing to say because it's such common sense. But I do think that a lot of runners have an issue with breaking out of the – that they have a, a set speed which when if, – if you, they go out for an average steady run, they have this set speed which they slip into. And that speed might be a little bit too quick to run 105 miles over a full week. So if they use Garmin's and stuff like that, I'd be encouraging them to go out and forcing themselves to run maybe 30 seconds to a minute slower every mile than they would normally at least for the first few days. Mm. Um, and I think some of them will find that quite difficult because they're used to their Sunday run pace or whatever it is that they naturally slip into. And people all the time say, when I run slower, it feels awkward to me. Mm. But I think they should try and back off and run slower. Yeah. If you're running twice in a day, then I'd also just say, look at your, look at your times when you're going to run as well. So you obviously better just get up and get something out of the way if you can in the morning. And then if you're going to run again later in the day, when is it that you're going to run? Because the later you run in the evening, the less recovery you have overnight before you're going to be running again in the morning. So the optimal balance is probably you kind of first thing in the morning and then four o'clock in the afternoon, isn't it? Mm. So you're trying to get that 12 hours and 12 hours, if you like, between the, between the two runs. Um, so, you know, uh, run slow and consciously use the Garmin to try and run a little bit slower. Um, Look at the, the, how many hours is it between each run and use that to set the optimal time to run. And then other than that, you know, just it's, it's simple hydration. Make sure you're hydrated and make sure you're eating well and make sure you're getting enough, uh, enough sleep and going to just go to bed an hour early. And that in itself can make a big difference. You know, look after your aches and pains. Make sure you do a little bit of stretching, a bit of rehab and all that kind of stuff here and there. Um, and, and I think that's more of the physical side. And then from a psychology perspective, I think uh, the, that's because that's probably one of the biggest things is the psychology side of it. I always think planning a route in advance is key. So that what you don't want to be doing is getting up on Wednesday morning, knowing you've got to do 13 miles and going, right, where shall I go today? Then? Mm. Yeah. And you end up running and thinking, well, should I go this way and form a loop or should I go that way and form a loop? Write it down on, on a spreadsheet or whatever you're going to do, pencil and paper if that works for you. That I'm running this far on Monday morning, this far on Monday evening. And the routes for those are from this point to this point to this point. So the loop is there. Mm. So at four o'clock, you go out of the door and the route is set. I always find trying to make up the routes as you go is never works. So the routes are set. They're bound to, uh, in, 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 and you, you know where you're going. Um, run with other people if you can, listen to music, all these kind of things. But And also just get engaged with the week as well. You know, get on social media and get on the Facebook page and follow what other people are doing. Because if you see everybody else doing it and you're part of that community, then undoubtedly that will drag you along as well. So, yeah. So I think, you know, try and cover both the physical and the psychology side of it and have fun. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Excellent. I, 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 think I, I, I think one of the things I learned, Mark, last year when I did the Dragon's Back, where I was out for 12, 14 hours a day, it, to actually treat the, the time you're not running as just as important, you know, and mm. that recovery time and what you're doing for me, getting into the camp and making sure that I got, you know, I got washed and cleaned and got food in and rested, that was also almost as important. And I, th I think if you are going to run slower, it's going to take you longer to run the time. So yeah, therefore, yeah. therefore, you know, that, that recovery time is, is all, all pretty vital, isn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And of course, a lot of people in different situations as well, because I'm, you know, I've seen lots of messages from people who are, have to fit this in around work and yeah. fit it in around shifts. And then they've got the childcare and all that kind of stuff because the kids are not all back at school. Yeah. So for a lot of people, they're not going to have that luxury of, you know, when you go into Dragon's Back, you've got that mm. week there yeah. just to yourself. Yeah. So you've got nothing else to worry about when you finish mm. the run. 
yeah. apart from recovery and getting ready for the next day. Mm. A lot of people, that isn't going to be the case, is it, next no, week? that's right. Because of the situations where they say some people are back at work or they're working from home and they're juggling kids while they're working from home. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, I, I think I say any of that side that you can plan mm. ahead in advance, again, I think, you know, the, the running itself is a stress on your body, but also is all that other stress, you know. So, uh, so if, if you can do anything to take a bit of pressure off off that side as well, I think then that will help people. Just a bit of downtime, will, I'm sure, will help people to um, you know make the week successful. Yeah, I'll just give a little plug as well to my friend Dave Trollman, who I did the, the Lakeland videos with, who's um, a coach now in in Keswick, and he he is quite a few of his runners are doing the the, the virtual race. And so he wanted to see what it was like. So he ran 100 miles in a week, a couple of weeks ago, and did a really good YouTube video. And um, and I think one of the things that I remember from that that Dave really brought out was the importance of water as well. Like it was quite mm. a hot week when he ran. And uh, yeah. a couple of times, you know, he was he was so glad that he'd taken extra water. And I think that'd be worth mentioning as well, wouldn't it? That If you're going to be out for uh, three, four hours doing your walk run, and it's and it's a warm week next week just to make sure that you've got water because there's nothing worse is there you know if you're two hours in and you've got two hours to go and you've ran out of water and the recovery thing as well you know so it dehydration is one thing in terms of making you slower on any set run but if you've got to go out again at four o'clock in the afternoon yeah then the, the quicker you, you recover the better that run's going to be and that's accumulation of fatigue over the week isn't it so it's fine struggling on for the last hour of a run with no water and getting to the finish and thinking, oh, well, I managed to get to the end. But what state would you be in by four o'clock in the afternoon when you've got to go out again? So I don't know what the forecast is for next week, John. Have you, have you seen? No, I haven't actually. Long- yeah, I've not looked yet. No. no. Uh, but if it is warm, then, yeah, certainly water and salt as well. You know, this. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, salt's really uh, underrated. The, the amount of sodium that probably people need to take to fully hydrate, you know, we... Mm. Um, you know, many. You remember, you're old enough like me to remember the days when we were told not to take salt because it was bad for our blood pressure. And you, That's right. <laughs> you couldn't even buy salt packets in those days. And, yeah. You know, and, and the reality is, people probably don't take anywhere near enough salt. So drinking a lot of water without salt can just be as dangerous as not drinking water, can't it? So yeah. So yeah, so keeping topped up on sodium and, and uh, water be critical if it's a warm week next week. Yeah. Okay. Some great advice there. Right, we've got a couple of questions, so I'll I'll bring these on. And the first one is from Charles Turner. Good to have a serious question to start with. He says, do you need to carry your food whilst on the event? Do you need to carry your food? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not within the, within the regulations, but I would say when it is within the spirit of the event. <laughs> so, so I'm going to leave that one up to him. Yeah. It's his choice. I would say it's in the spirit of the event, but it's not within the regulations. Okay. <laughs> and Sally Howarth says uh, good advice she says we'll try not to trip over any speed bumps so I'm not quite sure what that refers to but uh, she's I think she is she is prone to a little trip every now and again yeah but she does make mount- she makes a mountain out of a speed bump as well to be fair do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> she'll, she'll be wearing hokers to descend off the speed bump so yeah <laughs> and then um paul Foch has said it's due to be sunny and dry down south next week so those that are down south yeah. he's checked the weather forecast so there's that one on there okay i'm interested in up north john yes i'm def- interested in up north yes and i'm even <laughs> further north than you are so that's uh, even more so it's sunny down south yeah they're only three miles from the bahamas aren't they that's right <laughs> <laughs> um, now there's a question on um on the Facebook uh, page that I've picked up from Martin Thompson. And he was asking about um, uh, if, if you're on, um, I, I think if it's on Garmin, to make sure you put it as a, as a run, but also just thinking about how we upload it. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the question there, but I'll leave that one. But there is a question, of, and people have been asking that. And I know you sent an email out today, which will give more details tomorrow. Uh, is that right? So you're sending an email out? Send an email out tomorrow with more details. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and if you were just make just the thing. What's interesting about the event as well is that the software for virtual events. So the people were using Results Base, and um, they're having people who provide this kind of software and Results Timing are having to write the software themselves mm. because suddenly people want to do virtual events and we want to do you know upload stuff and 
track how far people have ran. Because it's not really been a thing, they're, they're writing the software as they go as well. Mm. So, it, so it's not been there ready in a box for us just to use. So we've just been making sure everything's working on, on the system and, and so on. But basically, you, you'll have three options, which is you can, um, you can link to your Strava account. And then when you run on Strava, Strava will automatically send the run to, um, to, to the uh, results-based software. Uh, you can link your Garmin, uh, link, link to the Garmin software, or you can just do it old school and just manually upload. So I, I don't know much about Strava and automatic uploads. I don't know much about Garmin and automatic uploads. But old school, it would be very, very simple. So you would run a set distance, measure it on your watch, <laughs> take a photograph of your watch on your phone, and then upload that photograph as evidence. So when you log in, you would say, I ran this far. It took me this long. And there's a photograph to prove it. And, and it really is as, as simple as that. So, so and again, if anybody's struggling, I get what will probably happen is I will get a lot of emails coming to me directly or Facebook messages saying, I can't quite get Garmin to connect or I can't quite get Strava to connect. And obviously, because I don't design the system, it's a results-based system that we're using and we pay to use. That's the kind of questions we will we'll direct to results base. Um, but my advice would be, you know, in that scenario, just just use the old school and just just put in today. I, at this time, I ran this far. It took me this long, and there's a photograph to prove it. And yeah. It is as simple as that. And then what what should happen then when? And this isn't live. It will be live on Monday. Um, what will happen is you will see a map of the course, and you will be moving along that map, completing uh -huh. the hundred oh, wow. fifty mile course. Yeah. So you should get to. Um, you should get to the uh, checkpoint uh, on that day, or you should see where you are in relation to the checkpoints on that on that day. Um, and then we'll have a list of how far people have, you know, how far people have ran, and then there'll be a set of results which will show you who's finished and and, and how long they took. Yeah. So everything will be there. So that that'll be kind of live, you know, ready to roll for Monday. Um, I'm just trying to think what else I was going to say then about the um, about the system. Oh yeah, we, we needed to. We had a problem loading the. The, the map so with, you you'd be seeing the visual map of the lake from 100 and you'd be moving along that map and uh we had we had drama today when uh, uncle terry sent me the gpx file of the lake from 50 course but it didn't include the four mile lap of dale main oh. so it was only four to six miles <laughs> so with this massive drama so I've sent him back and said that's that's not good enough i'm not accepting <laughs> such gpx files so we're now just going to so it'll be in place by Monday, but yeah, but it's a new thing for us. You see, and the software people who build it, it's new for them. It has been something new over the last couple of months, and it's new for us using it. So, yeah, but it'll be fine, and it, and it will be very simple. Yeah. So if you're in doubt about Strava or Garmin and linking all those kind of things, it will be that easy to go to my account today at this time, on this date, at this time, I ran this far, and this is how long it took me. Dead simple. Take a photograph of your watch to prove it. Put it in. Yeah, that's all it is. Actually, Mark, you, you, you've even answered someone's question before they asked, asked it. Because Mark Brown, as as you were talking, Mark Brown said, "Are oh, you going to have a virtual map to show how far along the route you've progressed each day?" So look at that. You're you're a, a step ahead of the game. And we've also got a couple of comments back from Paul Fosh says, uh, "Oh, you've had that one." Jusby South. Sally says, ha, "Mountain out of a speed bump." She liked that one. I bashed myself <laughs> up a bit. Uh, Paul comes back and says, always sunny down south. And Wendy Ward says, cloudy and sunny in Chorley with light rain at the weekend. So mm -hmm. that's uh, a bit of that. Um, mm -hmm. Mark, Marcus, Mark, Marcus Kermode <laughs> said, I'm running in Bermuda, 85% humidity, 80 to 85 degrees. I'm not quite sure. Just showing off. I know. Yeah. Is, is he in Bermuda? Is that, do you know him? Is that what I don't is? know. Is no. he talking about just like shorts or is actually in Bermuda? Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got um, Tim Mosdale says, Now then, Mark, I reckon I could be cursing your name come the end of next week. So he wants to know how you're pronouncing your surname so we can curse you correctly. It's Kynaston. <laughs> <laughs> Light <laughs> white. Yeah. Now the, the key question I've got for you, Mark, is: are, are you doing it? Am I doing it? Yeah. Breaking up, John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I struggling it. <laughs> um. 
Yeah, I probably will. Excellent. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm, I'll probably do the 50. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in hard triathlon training mode at the moment, so I'm doing a lot of biking and swimming as well. Okay. So I think the 100 is just too much for me. Uh, but my wife's – I'm probably the 50, and my wife's doing the 50. Okay. The next door neighbors are doing the 100. Right. So, yeah, I'll probably get tagged in at some point. Yeah. I was going to say as well, this is a very random thing, but we've got a treadmill next door. And I was going to say, if people want to run on a treadmill as well, I know that's quite, that question is more. You run on the treadmill, you take a photograph of the treadmill screen, and then you just upload that. Yeah. And I'm trusting that you haven't been sat there with a pork pie watching TV while the treadmill's running. But take a picture of the treadmill and just upload so there yeah. is a, um, obviously a very big element of trust here that people are honestly doing the event. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I must admit, I do love that idea because I know when I signed up, you could link in your Strava. And if that does work seamlessly, yeah. then it will be brilliant because literally as soon as you finish the run, you download it. By the time you've had a shower, it's all it's all up there. It's yeah. great. You know, it works really well. Yeah. But the, the great thing I'm is, out though... On Monday, John. <laughs> sorry? <laughs> Yeah, we'll find out on Monday. Yeah, yeah. But the, the good thing is, though, if it doesn't work, then you've got a great backup system. And I've been on the site, and it's yeah. dead easy. You just put your, you put your times in, you put your distance, and then you, you send a photograph. And it's, so, and it's dead easy doing a screenshot of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a Garmin or of a Strava. And so if it doesn't work. So yeah, that... if, if people can't connect, would you rather they just do that rather than contact you and ask loads of questions? I mean, they're, they're welcome to contact us. I, we, we'd have to contact the people who run the site because I, uh, you know, I couldn't do a technical query on why a Strava account isn't syncing to results base because it's not, it's not my website. It's just a service, you know, they're providing and we, we, we pay them for that service. Um, but um, I guess I would say what I don't want people to do is if they're having a problem, I mean, I'm not great with IT anyway, so I wouldn't even try and link a Strava account or a Garmin with it because I'm just old-fashioned that way. And if I was running it myself, and I'm in that situation, those people who are great with IT and they're happy with all that tech and stuff like that, just crack on and do it. If you're questioning it yourself, I want the week to be fun and enjoyable. Yeah. And what I don't want is people swearing at the, the computer for 45 minutes to an hour and then sending emails and getting themselves wound up because they can't link the Strava or the Garmin and it ruins their week yeah. because they can't do that. So... If you're not sure whether you'll be able to make that work or if you're having problems with it, then just go for the simplest option. You know, just go for the simplest option and, and just don't do something which is going to get you stressed out mm. or anything which is going to upset you because it's supposed to be an enjoyable week and I don't want anything to override that. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. We had some people on the West Highland Way who did it manually, literally. They just wrote down and they had to do legs. And then there's one person who had four runs, say, to do the first 36 miles. And when they added them up, they had something like um, uh, uh, it was like eight hours, 97 minutes and four, and 57 seconds. And they realized that, oh, no, there's only 60 minutes in, a, in an hour. <laughs> so they were, they were struggling to add up the, their times. So I think you're, the system, you're, even if you put it manually, it's going to add up your times for you, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then we've yeah. got a question from uh, Tom Thompson. He says, how much have we raised now, Mark? A fantastic job in, in setting this up. So have you got any idea have, of how much is roughly? I should have looked, to be honest. Um, I think we took about between seventy five and £80,000, um, and that was the, what we'd taken. So in terms of the charity... So everything goes to charity, so there are no external costs, and I'm quite open about this, and I will publish all the figures yep. on the Facebook page at the end as well so people can see very clearly. So when you end, people entered, they will have seen that uh, it – and you, you actually, John, you can probably confirm this for me, but when you entered, rather than it being £20, did it say it was like £19.40 plus mm. 60p or something like that? So that 60p is the charge that goes to the – using that system and that entry system. So that's the charge for results base. So everything else, the £19.40 or whatever it was, comes to us. And then from that money, we've got to buy the medals. Um, and then uh, we've got to pay for the uh, – basically pay for the, just the packing and shipping out of the medals and what that costs the postage to get stuff out to people. And then the T-shirts, I think we, we about 1,500 T-shirts we, we sold out of the 2,500 entries. 
Um, and then I think it was about nine, eight or 900 of the uh, headscarves as well. So the T-shirts were £15 and whatever they cost us, the difference all will go to the charity. So I don't, I, I've got the exact figure, but if they cost us £6, then the remaining £9 will go to the charity. And the, the buffs were, or oh, the chiefs, I've got to be careful here, copyright, <laughs> trademark and all that stuff. The, the chiefs were supplied free by Montaigne. Mm. So when you pay uh, £10 for the chief, that all of that money goes to the charity. Right. So, um, so, so I would guess from the 75 to 80 we've taken, I'm trying to think ballpark figures really, that I would think we would probably take at least, I'd hope to 65, 60 to 65,000 pounds for the charity. Wow. That's amazing, yeah. isn't it? And I say, and we're not, we're not taking a cut of anything. We don't charge for anything. All our time is free. It, it is literally just what we get charged for using the results-based website. Uh, which, for what it is, is again, is very cheap. Montaigne have given all the buffs for free. Go pay for the T-shirts, pay for the medals, pay for the postage to ship them out. You know, so, so yeah, so it is, it is literally that. Whatever's left over will go to charity. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's that's superb. And I think it makes all of us feel, you know, we we want to do it, but it's also great to be able to contribute to the charity. Uh, just remind us again uh, on where it's going, which charity it is. So it's the Epic Kids. So I was going to say, with, but obviously, I mean, you've seen the previous years with the charity donations that have gone, you know, we, with each day we donate, don't we, after the race, and it goes on for like three or four months where we're donating every day to, to a certain cause. So, and I think that that is part of the event, isn't it, that that's mm. why people enjoy entering because then afterwards they see where, the, where, you know, a lot of the donations go to and stuff like that. So the charity is, so the charity technically is our charity. So when we set up, Epic events originally, and then Lake and Hundred is separate to Epic events. But we have another, we have a company called Epic Events, which organises a variety of events all the way around the northwest. We set up a charity at the same time called Epic Kids, which was supposed to fund kids in sports, and we took a profit from from Epic Events and put it into Epic Kids. So all the charity money from Lake and Hundred goes into Epic Kids, and that's that's where the pot of money is, if you like. And then Epic Kids then donates to various things, and and. It, you know, we when you seen from last year's um, charity, we did food banks, we did homeless shelters, we did kids sports clubs, we did local hospices, and it is what it is. You know, it's a lot of this stuff just kind of comes up and we see it and go, oh, that'd be really good, mm. and we tend to give like five hundred. On average, it's normally a five hundred pound grant. So I think like last year, we from last year's event, it was just shy of a hundred thousand. I think it was like ninety eight thousand pounds or something. And it, so it, and it works out realistically about you know 170, 180 donations of of, of five hundred pound. It becomes a bit of a challenge as well mm. <laughs> because you start. I get on a roll and you think you've got to find something to donate to every single day so you can keep posting it on the Facebook page. <laughs> that in itself becomes a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, so the money comes into the Epic Kids pot and then we distribute it to various causes. And then, but what we do with some of the money this year as well. So. We were donating to maybe schools or to other providers to go and do stuff for kids at schools or youth clubs or whatever it may be. And then we kind of at a point now where we set up our own projects as well. And so one of the projects is Mountain Kids. And the idea of Mountain Kids is that we're going to get kids from disadvantaged schools, take them to the lakes for a day, take them to Coniston and do den building and all that kind of stuff with them. And it's actually we can get it's it's actually cheaper for us and more cost effective to hire our own instructors in and run that project than it is for someone else to do it. So we can reach more schools in effect by doing that. Mm. So we will pay instructors from outdoor ed companies or whatever to come in, and we'll coordinate that with schools around the northwest to you know to have these adventure days in the lakes. And yeah. um, so so yes, we'll go, some uh, some of it's going to go towards that project and some of it will go towards all those other kind of things that we generally donate to as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. And presumably, if you hadn't done the virtual race, the money that you raise each year, you wouldn't have raised that. Well, so th and, this, and, and that, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. absolutely right. And mm. you, you know, you talk about the knock-on effects and, you know, the economy and stuff and the knock-on and stuff like that. And to be honest, well, because the Lake Road itself is more of a charity event, for me personally, it, 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 it doesn't – if it had been rolled forward to next year – it's not a crisis in the situation where, you know, we can't pay salaries and stuff like that. With Epic Events, it is a problem for us because that's our business. Mm. But with, with Lakeland, it's not, you know, but 
the charity side of it, it suddenly is because I'm thinking, God, you know, there's people we fund annually and we give, you know, to sports groups for kids and all this kind of stuff. And I'm, I know those people will expect an annual donation from us and not expect as in, you know, not yeah. just expect it, take it for granted, mm. but we donated year on year. They just probably presume they're going to get a donation. I'm thinking, well, we've, we've no money in the pot. So, so I was kind of thinking if we can get 20 grand, so I was kind of doing the maths and thinking if we can get 20 grand, I could borrow some money from the business, put that into the charity pot, and then when we generate more charity money next year, I could then pay that back to the business <laughs> and borrow we borrowed. And how can we keep the charity thing going? Yeah. But of course, now that's just been yeah. brilliant for us. And whilst it's, it's not as much as we normally, it's probably about 30 grand short of what we normally generate, it's still a massive hole that we've filled. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, no, well done. That's superb. Now, I'm conscious it's uh, about 40 odd minutes, and I know you've got things to do. And um, so, thank you so much for your time tonight. I just got a message here from Tracy Whittle who says, Loving the enthusiasm, just like to say a huge thank you. This is going to be an epic event, big love. And I'm sure lots and lots of people who are watching this live, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll put a link on so people can watch it later as well. Um, but thank you yeah. so much for organising it, Mark. I'm really looking forward to doing it. And someone who's done quite a few bigger races, uh, to be honest, I've never done 100 miles training in a week. You know, I've done mm -hmm. long races where I've done it over a weekend and I'm, you know, I'm like one of your walking dead at the end. Um, but I've never done it over a week. So it's going to, I'm, yeah. look, I'm really looking forward to it. I've got a, it's going to be a real challenge running 105 miles from Monday to Sunday. And I'm, I'm wow. an experienced in a sense, but I'm looking forward to it. Some people will argue that stopping and starting is harder, isn't yeah, it? Once that's you're right. all in the event, yeah. and, and the, you're in the event with all the other competitors, but the stopping and starting and getting up the next morning and going again is, yeah. is going to be, it's going to be difficult in its own way. So, yeah. And so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stick to it. Hats yeah. off to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm working as well, so it's fitting in, yeah. you know, sort of uh, getting it done, yeah. and then also doing a day's work as well. So it's 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 uh, it's yeah. going to be great. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't yeah. do it if it wasn't for this, you know. And I'm yeah. sure there's lots of runners like me who would love to do something like this. But whether I would set set out to do it just on my own, but the fact that I'm yeah. part of a group and I'm I'm going to be on the on, on the board there and I'm going to be following each evening. You know, you, you feel part of an event. So even though I'll, I'll, I'll do the vast majority on my own, um, it will be lovely feeling as though you're part of a bigger group. And I think I think we'll yeah. all feel that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be a great week. Yeah. Jamie McElvinney says, amazing fundraising, such a great purpose, keeping the Lakeland family dream alive. So thanks for that. Um, Tim Mosdale, yeah. <laughs> really loved hearing about the charity. Great stuff. Can't wait. So... Thank, awesome. Thanks again. Well, let's let's finish there, and um, and look look forward to catching up with things that are happening next week. And all the best for your run. And make sure you run, not cycle. You're not allowed to cycle, okay? Well, you can no, no, no. you can cycle, but yeah. not for the fifty miles. Yeah. I did a hundred in one day on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you, and thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're on the, my YouTube channel, if you want to subscribe to get other things, that would be nice as well, but don't feel you have to. But if you want to, that would be good. And uh, m maybe we could even do one. At, well, I know you, you've got events so long, so we won't need to do another one afterwards because you'll be sharing. But that's great tonight. Hopefully, people have uh, that's helped people prepare as well. And we're all looking forward to it, and we're all going to be virtual legends next week. So thank you Absolutely. very much, everybody. And thanks again, Mark. Cheers, John. Yeah. See you.